Hello, welcome to the Unit 7 test review on, and 7A is going to be on characteristics of polynomial functions. So uh, we're going to have a question that is very similar to number one where you have to enter the equation in. Um, I would just recommend entering right into Desmos. Uh, we're looking for, then we're looking for local minimums. These are not total, like absolute minimums of the graph, but minimums within parts of the graph. So we're looking at this little minimum point here at 0, negative 3. Uh, maximum, local maximums are not maximums of the graph. The maximum of this graph would be infinity, but there's a local maximum, and I would just round to the nearest tenth. So one decimal place to the right of, well, one, one place, uh, one, one to the right of uh, the decimal. And so 115.5. If you're thinking, well, that's not off the graph, well, we'll estimate it. We'll, we'll put it off the graph, but we'll estimate it to make a graph, a nice looking graph. Um, other things we're going to need to graph this, because we do have to graph, we need our x intercepts. So we have an x intercept at negative 0.7, x intercept at 0.9 approximately, and at 4.9 approximately. So, and then we need a y-intercept. Well, that happens just happens to be the local minimum. It doesn't mean that it doesn't always happen that way. Just in this case, it does. So when we're drawing our graph, we're going to want to pull out all these points. So as a local minimum and a minimum point, typically has a uh, kind of a quadratic shape that's facing up. A local maximum of 3.3, 15. We're going to go way up top, somewhere up here. And that's a maximum point, which usually has a quadratic that is reflected. It's kind of that. That's kind of the shape of it. Then I plot each x-intercept: 0.9, 4.9. These are all approximations, and then the y-intercepts already graphed. Now we have we can kind of join our graph and follow going through all of our points. And I'm just looking at the Desmos app there and kind of getting the general shape. Um, now we can look at domain, range, domain, how far left, how far right, all your x values. That's negative infinity to infinity. The range, how low to how high. Well, it's going to continue to go down and up. So go from negative infinity to infinity. Always go from smallest to biggest numbers. Which, and then intervals are increasing and decreasing. So this is where we have to label our graph. So from left to right, our graph, this is decreasing portion until we get to this local minimum. And then it's back to increasing all the way up to this local maximum point. And then it's back to decreasing. So we have two intervals that are going to be decreasing, one increasing. So the increasing, since that's labeled first here, we always look at the x values. x value here is at 0. And the x value here is at 3.3. .3. Nothing with the y's when we're labeling increasing, decreasing. So increasing from 0 to 3.3, .3, it's decreasing. So this first portion that's decreasing is going to be decreasing from, it's coming from the left from negative infinity, and it's going to decrease all the way to 0. And I'm going to join it with a union just to say that there's also another part that's decreasing from 3.3. .3 to the right forever to infinity. Keep thinking x values left and right. Uh, looking at the end behavior, as x goes to negative infinity, that's the left side of the graph. X's are going negative. So as x is going, so on the left side of the graph, what's happening in the graph? It's going up to a positive infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, so that's the right side of the graph, where's the end? Here it is on the right side. And then where's that going? That's going down to negative infinity. Now we have that filled out. Now we have to do that same thing for uh, number two, but the graph's already given to you. If I, we give you the equation, you can plug it in in Desmos to get a little more accurate. Otherwise, I would just recommend just going off the graph and kind of estimating. So it looks like we have a local minimum here at, uh, what is that, about 1.9? You could say 2. Um, and I would say it's at negative 5. Uh, there's a local maximum here at, uh, we'll go point. 7 and negative 1.3 approximately uh, and then you might be thinking well what is this down here well that point is an absolute minimum point or sometimes it's called a global minimum point 
I think global actually sometimes makes more sense when you're talking local and global. Um, but most of the math teachers will use absolute um, minimum. So domain, how far left to how far right. They slowly go left forever and slowly go to the right forever. So our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Don't forget your parentheses. Um, brackets always mean that it's included, that it's actual point there, and negative infinity and infinity are not points. Uh, range, here we got it. This is, this is not just negative infinity to infinity because both the arrows, right side and left side, are going up. So our lowest point of the graph is right here. So we do have to know what this absolute minimum is. And I'm going to put it at about negative, now that I've messed it all up, negative about negative 8. So about negative 1, negative 8. So the range is going to go from negative